In this video, we're going to look at composite functions or functions of a function. Let's take two functions of x. We could have the f of x, and we will let the f of x be equal to 2x plus 1. So this is a linear function. We could take another function of x, g of x, and let g of x be x squared. What we're going to look to do is form the composite functions f of g of x and g of f of x. So let's start with f of g of x, and this is the notation that we use. If we have f of g of x, we do g first, then we do f. If you like, you can see g as the inside function and f as the outside function. So every time I see an x in f, I simply put in now x squared. If we do the g of f of x, we do f first, then g. So whatever letter is closest to the argument here is what we do first. So if we had h of g of f of x, we would first apply f, then we would apply g, then we would apply h. In general, the f of g of x is not equal to the g of f of x, as we will see shortly. So let's go ahead and look at forming these two composites, or functions of functions. So I'm going to take g now and feed it in to f. So every time I see an x, I'm going to put x squared in. So we can say f of g of x, the composite function, will be 2x squared plus 1. If we look at g of f of x, this time I'm going to take f and feed it in to g. So every time I see an x, I'm going to have 2x plus 1 instead. So we end up with 2x plus 1, which we need to square. So we have 2x plus 1 all squared. And as we can see, these are two different functions. Let's now define a domain for each of these and look at a mapping. So we've got the f of x, and we can write the f of x. The f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. And I'm going to restrict the domain on this one. So we'll have the domain, and we will say that x is a real number, so x belongs to the reals. And we can say now, with a restricted domain, x is going to be between 0 and 3. So this function now has the domain 0 to 3. If we take now the g of x we're going to have now x squared, and I'm not going to restrict the domain, I'm simply going to say that x will be a real number. So x belongs to the reals. Okay, let's go ahead and look at creating the composite function g of f of x. So we're going to first do f, and then we're going to do g. And we're going to look at this as a mapping. So I'm going to have a diagram now, and I'm going to feed in values of x. So right here, I'm going to have x, then what I'm going to do now is apply now the function f. That's going to map to the f of x, and the f of x we'll put just here. So this now is going to be the f of x. So I'm going to take some integer values to make my work quite easy. So f of x just here. So let's take 0, let's take 1, let's take 2, and let's take 3. So if I apply the f of x, 2 lots of 0 plus 1 is going to give me 1. 2 lots of 1 plus 1 will give me 3. 2 lots of 2 plus 1 will give me 5, and 2 lots of 3 plus 1 will give me 7. So we can see now I'm mapping x, and that is now following the map in 2x plus 1. So if we take 0, we get 1. Let's put that there. If we take 1, we get 3, and that's that one, just there. If we take 2, we get 5, and that will be that one, just there. And then what we're going to do now is take 3, and we will get 7. We're now going to apply the g function. So what we're going to get now is our output, and this is going to give us the g of f of x. So let's go ahead and write that. So this time, let's write this here. We've got now the g of f of x. So if I take 1, this is from the f of x, and feed it in, I'm going to get 1 squared, which is 1. If I take 3, when I square that, I'm going to get 9. If I take 5, I'll get 25. If I now take 7, I'm going to get 49. So we've applied the two functions in the order that we're given. So that's what we get. Now that is quite laborious, and it's certainly not what we would do each time we do this. What we would look to do is simply form the composite function and then feed values in. And we'll look to do that shortly. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we now look at this, we know from the previous part that if we have the g of f of x, so the g of f of x was given to be now the quantity 2x plus 1, and then we square that. So if we do now g of f 
of zero, subbing this in, I'm going to get one. Just put it in, two lots of naught plus one is one, one squared is one. The g of f of one is going to be three, three squared is nine. Then g of f of two is going to give me two lots of two plus one, which is five, five squared is 25. And you can see they're corresponding to these values right here. So we've got now g of f, now of the uh, five, um, which is going to be here, sorry, three, which is going to be here. So that's going to give us now the three, uh, which is going to give us now 49. So if we wanted the range of the g of f of x, we can see the range and we can write it just here. Let's write this here. g of f of x is going to be now between 1 and 49. So if we just look at this sketch, this is going to now be in this particular, let's just draw this up, uh, just draw a quick sketch of it now, we're going to have the function, and if we have 2x plus 1 all squared, it's going to look something like so. So we're interested in this now from 1 to 3. So we can see it's a 1 to 1 function in that part right there, so we've got now 1 and we're going up to 49. So that's what we got. And we certainly wouldn't do this, but having some understanding now of evaluating F, then evaluating G, is certainly required. And we'll look at that in a later part of the video. In order for us to create a composite or form a composite function, the range of the inside function must be in the domain of the outside function. So let's just recap that. If we want to form a composite function, the range of the inside function must be in the domain of the outside function. Let's look at that here. This is the range now for the f of x. I've taken values of naught, this is a linear function, from naught to three. I've got one, three, five, and seven. All of those are in the domain of now g. So I can feed all of these in. Now, that is because I've not got a restricted domain. Let's say I said now that the g of x was equal to x squared, and we defined the domain here to be all real numbers, so we said x belongs to the reals, but x was going to be now greater or equal than 4. If we look at this now, this falls foul. These two values can't go in because we can only have values of x 4 or more. The 5 is okay, the 7 is okay, but we cannot create the composite function until we restrict the domain. So let's look at the f of x. The f of x is 2x plus 1, and that must be at least 4. So 2x now must be at least 3, and we can say that x must be at least 3 over 2. So if we wanted to create the composite function just here, g of f of x given now that the domain of g was at least 4, we would have to restrict the domain of f to all values that are going to be 1.5 or more to create this composite function. So that's something that we have to be 100% happy with. So if we, for example, had, let's say we had uh, the f of x, let's say we had, now the f of x was equal to 2x plus 1, and we had the g of x, this time was equal to root x. And when we say g of x is equal to root x, we generally mean the positive root of x. So let's consider now a suitable domain for the f of x, such that we can form the g of f of x. So if we consider now, I'm going to graph this, what we've got here is the following. We've got now the g of x. The g of x for real values is only defined when x is going to be greater or equal to zero. We can't root a negative number and get a real value. Therefore, what we would have to do is consider 2x plus 1 being greater or equal to zero. And that would then allow us to define the domain for the inside function. So 2x is going to be greater or equal to minus 1. So x is going to have to be at least negative 1 half. So we'd have to restrict the domain now to at least x is going to be greater than minus one half to form the g of f of x. So do check, do be careful, and that is something that's absolutely essential. So we say that the range of the inside function must be in the domain of the outside function.
If we wanted to go the other way and define the f of g of x, we can see now that the domain for f, which would be the outside function, is from 0 to 3. So we would need to restrict now the range of the inside function to fit in with this. So if we consider, we could take plus or minus the square root of 3 to fit in with the domain of the outside function if we were trying to define the composite function f of g of x. Okay, let's look at some basic work. So let's take three functions. Let's say we've got now the f of x. Let's say the f of x is going to be, let's say we've got now 3x. Uh, let's say we've got the g of x. We'll take the g of x to be cos x. And we will take now the h of x, so a third function, h of x will be equal to, and let's take x cubed. We might be asked to find, for example, the g of f of x. So this is telling me first to do f, then do g. So if I take f and put it into g, I'm going to now have cos of 3x. So that is a function of a function. If we were asked for the h of f of x, we would do f first and then h. So we would take 3x and then we would cube it. So that's going to give me now 27x cubed. If we were asked for the f of g of h, we would do h first, then g and then f. So we would have now three lots of cos of x cubed. So we've done h, we fed it into g, and then we fed it into f. Sometimes we'll be asked to do the f of f of x. So the f of f of x. So in this case, we would have now 3x, so taking out the f of x, and then we would feed that in again. So every time we see x, we sub in 3x, and that's going to give me the f of f of x is going to be 9x. Sometimes we write this and we have f and then we have a 2 and x just here. This is not the same as f squared of x. It's just repeating the composition. It's not squaring it as we can quite clearly see. So what I'd have now here, f of f of x is 9x, yet if we squared this we would have 9x squared. In general, if we have f and then we have n and we take the function, this is simply applying now the composition n times. So if we took, for example, this one right here, let's say we took now uh, h and we took this now to the fourth. So what we'd have is four. So we're gonna have this now and we would do x to the power of three. We would reapply that, we would reapply it and then we would reapply it again. So, using the rules of indices, we could see now that this would be x to the power of 81. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. This is completely different to taking this and then raising it to the fourth power. If we took this to the fourth power, let's uh, just scribble that. If we took this to the fourth power, using now, let's do that, we've got uh, x cubed to the fourth, then we're going to have x to the power of 12. So you can see that these things are completely different. So the f of f of x is not f squared of x. It's simply saying, now, repeat the composition, apply it again. It's almost, you could see this as an iterative process. We're now going to move on and look at when we have a function and also a graph. In the part earlier, I looked now at this mapping. This is certainly not what we would do. We wouldn't just go ahead and do these. We would make the composite function and then evaluate the, I've just evaluated integers just here. So I've had x between zero and three. I've just taken some values and then looked at the range. And that's what we would do. Sometimes we need to do this step by step. The general convention is we feed in, we do g of f of naught, g of f of 1, and so on and so forth, rather than f of naught and then g of that value. So let's look at an example where that differs very slightly. And what I'm going to do is draw a graph. And we're going to say now that y is equal to the f of x. So let's just draw some graph. So let's draw a piecewise graph. We'll have something that looks like that, and then we'll do something like that with it. Okay, let's put some points on here. 
Let's say that this is going to be, uh, we'll say that that's negative 1, 0. Let's say that this is going to be 0, 2. And let's say this is going to be the point, and we'll put this point on here. And that's going to be, let's say, 4, 3. So we've got these points on the graph, and we will now write that this is y is equal to the f of x. So we've not got this defined as an equation as such. We've just got its graph and then some values on there. Now we might also be given now that g of x is equal to x squared. So here's g of x and our f of x is just given to be a graph. We might be asked to find, for example, let's say we were asked to find the g of f of 4. So if we tried to find g of f of 4, what we would do first now is the f of 4. If we do the f of 4, that's going to give me now from the graph. Remember, this now is y is equal to f of x. So if I do f of 4, I'm going to get 3. And then what we would do is g of 3. This does exactly the same. It's just harder now to create a composite function in terms of an algebraic expression because we don't know what this graph is. When we do the g of 3, we're going to do g of 3, g squared. So this is going to now be 3 squared, which is going to give me 9. So we can say that the f of g of 4 is going to give me 9 by simply applying now the inside function or the first function, which is f, then applying g. Let's say we wanted to find now f, now let's say f of f of minus 1. So let's go ahead and do this. So what we'd first do here is the f of minus 1. So the f of minus 1, reading the graph, is going to give me naught. So if we apply this again, what we're going to do is the f of naught. If we do the f of naught, we're going to end up with 2. So I've fed in minus 1, I've got naught, I've put naught back in, I've got 2. So we can say the f of f of minus 1 is going to be equal to 2. So all I've done is gone ahead and fed that in. And let's just put that there. So that's what we've done. So whilst we were creating the composite functions earlier, and it is generally better to do that than these repeated processes of evaluating the different val the values that were given, ultimately sometimes we won't be given now the function of x as some kind of equation. It will just be given as a graph, and you need to work it out from there. So there we go. That's a brief introduction. So let's go back and look at what we've seen. So if we have now composite functions, so we defined f of x to be 2x plus 1, g of x to be x squared. We've got the f of g of x. This means now we do g first, then f. Or if you like, g is the inside function, f is the outside function. Alternative notation, you might see f of g of x. We read this as f of g of x, and this one, g of f of x. It's more likely you'll see this notation. With the g of f of x, we do f first, then we apply g. We can make these composite functions in this particular way. For the composite function to be formed, we must have now the range of the inside function in the domain of the outside function, as we've seen here, and we've given a couple of examples. When we evaluate the f of g or the g of f of some value, we don't need to do it step by step. We just go ahead and evaluate once we've got our composite function. So in this particular case, we've looked now at the range of the composite function. This was a one-to-one, -one, so I had no problem sketching it and realizing it now for the end value of zero, we had one, and for the final value in the domain, we had now 49. And we also looked now at restricting the domain of some certain functions such that we could create a composite function. We then went on to look at just basic work with these and the notation that we might come across. This is just telling me to apply now the composition n times. So we see this just here, we're doing it four times. So we've got x cubed, then we cube it, then we cube it, then we cube it, and it differs. And in general, g of f of x is not equal to the f of g of x. Then we finished off by looking at a graph right here where our function of x was just given as a graph when we were given some points and then the g of x was given now as x squared and we had to find certain values. So hopefully that's given you a good brief intro into composite functions or functions of a function.